Hello, submarine friends. Before we head out to um, look at the SS City of Ainsworth, I want to make some videos about how the submarine works and how safe it is. So today I want to talk about the safety features of the submarine. Because it's a home-built submarine, people assume that it's not as safe as it would be if it was a commercially built submarine. Commercially built submarines are very nice, of course. I'm not trying to compare. I'm just saying that this is a very safe submarine. So let's start with the first thing. So first of all, the way the submarine works is these tanks keep it floating on the surface. As soon as I vent the air out of these tanks, the submarine submerges. Now let's say I'm on the bottom of the lake and I want to surface. So all I do, I transfer high pressure air from my gigantic holding tank and I force that air into these ballast tanks. That displaces the water and the submarine rises to the surface. Let's say for some reason, which is highly unlikely, something goes wrong with the line that carries air from the high pressure tank to the valves inside the submarine. I would have no air to push the water out. So inside the submarine, first safety feature, I have a backup air supply. It's a high pressure air tank, which will vent this, these tanks to bring it to the surface at any depth. Now, the second thing is, let's say we have, we have um, blown the ballast tanks and it still doesn't want to surface. So then we move on to the second layer of safety features. And that is in the back of the submarine, there's a 210 pound steel weight. I can release that weight, falls off the submarine, it's suddenly 210 pounds lighter and should shoot, shoot right to the surface. The way I release that is with a hydraulic hand pump. Now let's say for some weird reason, I don't know why, but the hand pump stops working. I even have a backup if the hand pump fails. I can use the same air pressure that I use to vent these tanks will also force the oil into the cylinder to release the weight. So I can release the weight with hydraulic pressure or with air pressure. So there's a double layer of safety there. The biggest risk that we face, especially diving the wreck in Kootenai Lake, is entanglement. Anchor lines, marker lines, fishing lines, any kind of thing like that, the submarine can become entangled. The first thing that it would entangle on, of course, is the propellers in the back. The vertical thrust propellers, they're very safe because they're down inside those holes back there totally inside the body, so really no chance for ropes to get in there. But the back thrusters, they're very vulnerable. Even though they have guards around them, they're still vulnerable. So they can also be released. So if I become tangled in a rope, all I do is I drop the drop weight because the, the aft thrusters are actually mounted to the drop weight. I like to keep it simple, so there's no point in having a whole other system to drop those thrusters when I can do the same job with the, with the drop weight. The next thing that we have that can get tangled especially is the mechanical arm. It's kind of just hanging out there and it's quite vulnerable to get hooked on things. Plus, I could actually reach out and grab that big piece of gold and all of a sudden I've got a hold of something and the arm quits. Now I'm literally locked onto something on the bottom of the lake. So the whole arm can actually be jettisoned right off the sub. All I do is turn a lever or a handle inside the sub and rotate it a few times because it's a threaded fixture and the whole arm falls right off. All the electrical lines and the air supply line to the arm, they all just automatically disconnect. One more layer of safety. Let's say I see a rope at the bottom of the lake, I think is an entanglement hazard, I can cut that rope. My hand on the electric arm has a rope cutting attachment on it, so it becomes very safe. So, although it's, again, it's not a, a commercially made submarine, we still have all the same safety features. One more really important feature, I just added this this week, and that is my new spool in the back. Let's go have a look. So in the back of the submarine, I've just added this new spool. I'm really happy I did this. What this is, this is a 18.5 pound buoyant float. So I release this float from inside the submarine. At the same time, this actuator releases the spool. 
because the spool has to be locked at all times. So now both are released. The buoy goes to the surface and it tows a rope that's on this spool to the surface. So the rope is a really high strength rope and can lift several thousand pounds. So if I'm stuck on the bottom of the lake, I can literally be winched off the bottom. So the rope goes to the surface, the surface crew takes the end of the rope, they feed it into the winch on my landing craft boat, and they simply winch me right off the bottom of the lake. So you can see the submarine is quite safe. So one more feature that the submarine has is underwater communications. This is just a diver communication system, but it works fantastic. I was 335 feet in Kootenai Lake last, last summer, and we could talk just like we're talking now. Everyone could hear everyone beautifully. So I always have radio communication, and the surface personnel, they remind me to do safety checks while I'm diving, oxygen level, CO2 level, that sort of thing. So we're operating the sub in a very safe manner. So that's, what we're, that's all I have to talk about with the outside of the submarine. My next video will be an interior tour, People are always asking, they want to see inside the submarine. So I'll do a, a complete video on the interior and all the safety features in there as well. Ciao for now.